If you would like to send your Zoom meeting links automatically through High Level, you just got to the right place. I'm going to show you the step by step how you can integrate your Zoom calendar with High Level so every time someone books an appointment with you, they automatically get that link. So if you like content like this, make sure you're a subscriber of this channel and editor, play the intro. What's up everyone, Lucas Dentis here bringing another high level content and today I'm going to show you how you can integrate your Zoom account with high level so every time someone books an appointment you can send that link automatically. First of all, what you're going to need for this is of course a Zoom account and also a high level account. If you do not have a high level account, I'm going to leave here in the description of this video a link of a 30 day trial so you can sign up and try this out for your business. And you know that we don't waste anybody's time here so that's why I'm already sharing my screen with you guys. The first thing that we have to do in this case is click on settings and then we're going to click on my profile because here is where we're going to set up this integration. You need to access the user settings. So if you are doing this for your client, you need to make sure that you either log in as him using this high level feature or you actually literally log in as him with his username and password. And, and right after you do that, this is the section you're going to click on my profile. As you see here, I already have my Outlook email set up, but in order for you to set up your Zoom integration, you need to scroll all the way down here to video conferencing. You see calendars here, you're gonna click on video conferencing and you're gonna click on add new. Here, like you see, I have already set up my integration with Zoom and right after you click on connect, you're going to be prompted to log in into your Zoom account. After you do that, this is going to be automatically created. You see right here, this Zoom account has been created. And the next thing you have to do is to scroll all the way here to user availability. And then you click on Zoom. You need to select Zoom here. And of course, set up your availability, your time zone. So if you are available from Monday to Friday, you set up your times accordingly. If you are available every day, that's what you have to set up here. Don't forget to click on update availability. Otherwise, this information would not save. After you do that, you're ready to move to the next step, which is creating a calendar that will automatically grab that link and you can use that in your automations to send that using email, using SMS, however you would like. So now that we have finished the user setup, it's time to create a calendar. This calendar will be responsible to collect that Zoom link so we can use the high level variables to send in the automations, to send in the reminders, send however you would like. The first thing you have to do is to click on create calendar right here at the top. We're going to select the round robin calendar. This calendar can be used if you have one or five users for example in the personal booking you can also use that but it's only for one user so to make this easier on this demonstration we're gonna go with the round robin calendar the first thing you have to do is to set up a name I'm gonna call this test calendar and then you're gonna select the team members like I said you can select one user since I'm the only one in this account I'm gonna select myself but if you have other users you can select them all here as well then the calendar URL this is just like a custom URL that you have to set up because each high-level calendar each widget it needs to have its own unique slug so this is what basically what you're doing here but don't worry about this is not going to populate any links what I usually do is to put the calendars on a page and share the page link so don't worry about this if you are planning to use this on a page there you go then we're going to select the mirroring duration I'm gonna select one hour or 60 minutes in the availability I'm gonna leave as it is Monday to Friday 8 to 5 that's good for me if you would like to receive a payment during this booking you can as well we're not going to demonstrate here and the next thing is to click on confirm Confirm, or you can click on advanced settings to go to the next step where we need to go. So I'm going to click on confirm right here and then I'm going to click on close and I'll click on edit. If you had click on advanced settings, you would be directed straight to this page. But I'm just showing you around the system so you get familiar with this. So here you can set up a logo, the calendar name, the description. You can add to a group. We already done the custom URL. And here is the important part here for the setup to work. This integration with Zoom, you need to make sure that Zoom is selected for your user. And if you don't see Zoom here by default, make sure you go back to your profile right here where we were in the first part of the video and make sure that you have selected Zoom as the primary way to book meetings with you, okay? In here, you can select the team members as well. The priority won't make a difference here in this case because we only have one user. If you had several users, you can select different priorities for them, which basically means that whoever has higher priority will receive more leads than people who have a lower priority, okay? 
okay? So that's it here on this part. I'm going to click on save. Now that we have saved, we're ready to go. But since I'm already here, I'm going to go ahead and explain the rest of the calendars so you can understand. So here on availability, basically you select the days that you are available. Here is from Monday to Friday, 8 to 5. So if you like to change the times of the day that you are available on a specific day, you can do it here. If you want to do a specific date, you can do it right here. For example, I don't want to have anything on my calendar on the 24 and the 25. So I can select the 24. I can remove it from here and then I can click on submit. I can then go to the 25 and then click here, remove it and then submit and see December 24, December 25 are not going to show up as available dates on my calendar. Here on look busy, you can hide randomly dates of your calendar. So I would be careful with this because you have no control over this. If you want to set a specific dates that you're not available, I would recommend to use this. But if you just want to make your calendar show busier than it actually is, just type in 15%, 25%, whatever percentage you would like to add, you can set up here. Then you can keep scrolling down to see here the meeting interval. This is the interval that the meetings are going to show up for leads they're trying to book with you. If you do 15 minutes, it's going to be 9, 9, 15, 9, 30, 9, 45, 10, 10, 15. And you can do one hour as well. It's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11. Those are the interval that's going to show up for you. The meeting duration. This is the amount of time that each meeting is going to take. So if you do a one hour, and someone books with you at 8 30 that means from 8 30 to 9 30 you won't be available the minimum schedule notice how much time in advance are you giving people to book an appointment with you if you do one day so today is december 2nd so if you do one day that means i will see the next day available on your calendar december 3rd and i would see only from 2 p.m and on the date range this is how much time i'm giving for people to book an appointment with me so if i do 30 days that means that people will see my calendar up to January 1st, right? I was gonna say January 2nd, but if it was 31 days, then people would see on January 2nd. If you don't want to change any settings you want to leave as default, just make sure it's all blank. The maximum bookings per day. How many appointments can you handle a day? If you put seven, that means that after the seventh person has booked an appointment with you, the eighth would not be able to book for that same day. And then the maximum bookings per slot, which means that how many meetings can you have on that same slot? How many bookings can you handle? on that same slot and it says per user which means that if you put two that means that even if someone books with me from eight to nine someone can go and book that same date and time again and then to end pre-buffer time this is how much time you need to prepare for a meeting so if you are using this as five minutes for example or 20 minutes it won't make a difference in this case because our meeting interval is 30 minutes but if you need 20 minutes to prepare for a meeting that means if someone books with you at nine at that appointment from 8 30 to 9 will be taken because the system will automatically assume that you need 20 minutes from that slot to prepare in the post buffer time it's basically the same thing but after the meeting if someone books an appointment with you at 9 in this case it's a 60 minute meeting that means that your availability from 10 to 10 30 will be taken away because the system will automatically assume that you need 20 minutes out of that slot to recover from the meeting so that's it here on this part of course you have the option to change how the appointment is done by default is going to be first the date and time selector and then the form you can switch this you can also change the form that you are using here you can also specify that if you want to accept payments you can customize your consent checkbox your confirmation page or your confirmation message or even a redirect URL page. The notifications, you can do it right here. Right now, now on high level, we have these notifications as well. I'm still on the old school part. I do all the confirmations and notifications through automations, but you can also do this here. Remembering that if you do on the unconfirmed, they're going to receive like a request, right? Like someone has requested a meeting with you. And then when it's confirmed, you can send the confirmation information. And then you can, of course, you can click on contact see here how this email is going to be sent you can edit how this template looks like you see all this information here can be added and you can do it right here on this feature which is a new thing that high level just brought up in this case i'm going to do everything through automation so i don't need this information right here so i need everything is going to be disabled you see i have the in-app notifications but i don't have anything else and if you are using this calendar with several users you might want to use this option right here which makes sure that whenever a contact that's not assigned to any user gets a sign automatically when the appointment is booked in this case we don't need the setting because it's only one user we're doing so we don't really need this in the last thing you can do is to customize your calendar set up 
what is going to be the background color, the primary color, you can edit how the button looks like, the text, you can remove the calendar title, remove the calendar description, the calendar details, you can add a CSS code here if you would like, and if you were using more than one user, you can use this option here to allow staff selection during booking, which means that people will be able to select an user while they are booking an appointment, okay? This might be good for like dental clinics, you know, where people have a, like more direct contact with the users, like a barber shop. But anyway, the most important settings here are this section right here. So make sure that Zoom is selected. Now that we have done this, we're ready to move to the next stage, which is using automations to send that link to everyone. Now we have finished the settings. It's my favorite part, which is the automation. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to automation on your left hand side and then click on create workflow. And we're going to start this from scratch. I love to create workflows from scratch because I think it makes it clear in your head what are we doing and then you get used to create workflows from scratch and when you're used to create workflows from scratch your job is easier especially when you get like a package of automations or when you import a snapshot you can easily identify what these automations do so the first thing we're going to do is to create a name for auto automation so it's going to be test calendar booking and we're going to do here confirmation and reminders okay so now we have the name and we're going to select our trigger. Our trigger is customer booked appointment. And we're going to select that calendar, the test calendar that we have created. I always like to put names that are easy to identify because then I can just look at the steps and I know exactly what they mean. So the first thing we're going to do is just send an email confirmation. So we're going to go ahead and click on email, confirmation email right here. And I'm going to use my custom values to make it easier. The subject is appointment confirmation you can add an emoji you can make this however you would like in here we're going to send this email to confirm the appointment so hello or hi i can include here the company name in this case it's my company name so i'm going to use here the account name so we're scheduled for and here i'm going to use the variable which has the start date in time of the appointment so thanks for booking an appointment with company name in our case is magnetic funnels we're scheduled for it's going to show up the date the day of the week the date and the time in here i can share the meeting link in here i'm going to include the meeting location i already have a video in this channel where i show you how you can automatically send the google meet link when someone books an appointment and the process is basically the same what really changes is on the user part because there we have selected zoom and for google we select the google calendar so it's not very different from what we have already done but this is how you can send this confirmation you know we can also send the reminders we can wait how many days you would like it doesn't matter how so our next action is going to be wait I'm gonna do event event appointment time and I'm gonna wait five days before event in here I'm gonna select five and then I can specify what's going to be my alert right I'm just copying and pasting here and here I'm gonna change reminder five days before event we are five days away from our meeting the subject your meeting with the business name for meeting with magnetic funnels is in five days and we are scheduled for so here we're going to send again the appointment date and time in the link for the meeting of course you can make this better you can specify your name here you know or you can even use a variable which is going to be like the user who has been assigned and the location name here at the bottom so you have an easy to do email template right so these are your reminders and then to make it easier just go here you copy and paste and then you change this three days if you like and then you just change this as well of course you can make these emails with a better copy i'm just showing you what's the process what's the framework to achieve this and then i can also do one hour before the appointment just so you can see a different example one hour before zero one hour and here I'm gonna copy and also create the reminder one hour before the event we are one hour away the meeting is in one hour and of course on this one we don't have to do the date you can just do the time appointment start time and there you go so that's the automation very easy to do right all you need to do is to make sure that you have the right trigger and you see that I have named 
every single step here doesn't that make it easier because here i know customer booked appointment on the test calendar it's going to send a confirmation email it's going to wait five days before the event it's going to send a reminder five days before the event then it's going to wait three days then it's going to send a reminder for three days the reminder for three days then it's going to wait one hour and then it's going to send a reminder one hour before the appointment that's it very easy to identify very easy to create this automation as well and of course the last thing is to publish and now we're ready to test this so now it's time to start testing things to make sure that everything that we have done was correct so we're going to test the calendar and the automation so here i am where all my calendars are i'm going to use the permanent link so my device for you that wants to share this with your clients add this to a page and share the page link otherwise you're going to send something ridiculously like this link url.magneticfunnels.io slash widget slash booking slash r4gbpee -E -E. nobody wants that right so make sure you add this calendar to a page so you don't send an ugly link like this and probably will make people think that you are scamming them you're sending a link of something that's not a calendar so i'm going to copy this link and paste it right here i haven't done a lot of changes to this calendar but i'm going to book an appointment so you see how that looks like so i'm going to choose december 5th at 1 p.m i'm going to select the date i'm going to type in my information here and now no additional information i'm going to consent and then click on schedule meeting and right after i do that i see the confirmation and a link has been generated this is the zoom link that's going to be shared with people through the automation let's make sure that it's happening let's go back to high level let's close this let's go back let's go to the contacts so let's go back to the contacts and right here you see my user appointment confirmation right here and the link has been shared as well easy right guys and like i said the day of the week the date and the time has been shared as well guys very easy to do that I hope that this video was useful for you. If you're trying to find a channel where you can learn about high level features, this is the channel. I share content in a weekly basis here. I do content in English and Portuguese. Every other week, there's a video in English. In the description of this video, I'm going to leave a link for my community on GoCollab, where I show how I have leveraged my content in Portuguese to create courses, create a mentorship, and start coaching people in Brazil. I show the process of creating my free course, creating my paid course and how I'm using my YouTube audience to promote high level to Brazil. If you would like to know more about that, check out the link in the description of this video. And I'm going to leave two videos here for you. One of them about Closebot, this solution that I have been using for clients, and it's amazing lead qualification tool. And the other one is the algorithm that's going to recommend to you. Guys, thank you so much. See you on the next one.